Hello everybody, it's your friend Rick. It is October the 4th, 2017. If you need to reach me uh, by email because you're interested in making a donation to receive my paperwork, uh, the email is rick0327 at me.com. Okay, so uh, I got my last video, we were going over the writ of habeas corpus and the full faith and credit. Okay, and you know, the writ of habeas corpus is called the great writ. And it's called the great writ for a reason. Well, it's a great writ because it's written specifically that uh, a writ of habeas corpus cannot be suspended at any time unless um, by uh, some type of you know war or whatever it's it's, it's like going martial law or something like that it's very serious stuff in other words it cannot be taken away from you and what it does is it protects you from tyranny now what is tyranny tyranny is uh, actions outside of any type of law okay it's basically you're being ordered to do something or you're being uh, you're, you're being you have in your land dispossessed that's a new uh, legal phrase I'm going to show you guys because um, I found uh, some you know a nice case law from the Supreme Court uh, that says you cannot be imprisoned or uh, dispossessed or dispossession they call it you know they don't they don't go into detail so you got to look up these words and then you find out that dispossession is being deprived of your land and this cannot happen unless by a judgment of your peers and where do we have a judgment from peers from a trial by jury okay so any judgment for support we know is without a trial by jury okay and that that makes it unconstitutional now how do you challenge uh, an unconstitutional act you got to do it by writ of habeas corpus now we know that we're, we're, we're dealing with tyranny because we're dealing with these judges who are just like well it's my way or the highway attitude and then uh, we try and file paperwork and you know we, we were having it uh, rejected without reason and a lot of my subscribers who made donations who are using my paperwork and they're seeing the tyranny they're seeing the fraud they know that my paperwork works but it doesn't work because we're coming up against a monster a monster of you know of, of, of criminals working in state and, and, and working in the courts okay so I got like these haters that I always see you ever notice that I don't hate on anybody does anybody do I ever waste any I wasted a couple of you know videos because I was being attacked okay and at some point I got tired of being attacked all right. I also don't like when people get ripped off, ripped off. Okay, and you know when I'm being, uh, you know, bad mouthed by somebody who's also ripping people off, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna come back at you. All right, and 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 if you're a nobody, I'll mention I'm you know I'll make reference to you, but I'm not gonna give out your name because I'm not gonna let you get any extra views, off of me. But apparently, you know. People are, my stuff don't work, and this, that, and the other thing. Listen, my stuff does work if we're dealing with the courts if they're working properly, but they're not working properly, okay? And when I started my channel like a year and a half ago, all I started doing was documenting what I was doing. Go back and watch my original video. You'll see it. So whenever these haters are like, I have no proof, they're talking out of their ass. Because I do have proof. I documented it. Actually, I started making videos before I won in court. Okay? Hold on a second. Uh, 
so I had a door closed and my cat was trying to get in. And, uh, you know, these are just haters because I, I have proof. I documented it. I, I mean, you, I have videos of me in court where I snuck a camera in. You have videos of me fighting with these people. You have audio of me fighting with court officers. Okay? So if anybody wants to call me a fraud, it's because they're haters and they're threatened by me. And then in the comments section, you'll have these trolls saying, I got my paperwork from Rick. And they're trolls. I don't know these people. So you know what that means? That means I'm a threat. All right, and it means that my stuff works if the courts work properly. Now, what happens is I box my people in, and they got tired of me because I also I I, I sued uh, a couple of them in court. All right, it got thrown out, but it also you know I, I can come back at them at a later time. I'm not done with them yet. But the next person dealing with my paperwork, he saw that I meant business. That's the judge in the video, and. If you watch that video, the uh, Rita Quarento video, what happened at the end of the video? The judge granted me a stay. What a stay means is that the order is frozen, unenforceable at that time. And then three months later, the order was vacated. Okay, so that's called a victory. It's also documented. Okay, so you know, it's not, not me holding up a piece of paper sideways. With a, with a scribbly line that claims to be a judge signature with no name. All right? It's like some other clown who, you know, thinks he's going to charge $500. So this is what I want you guys to do. If you guys don't think that I'm for real, all right, then, then go to those people, go buy their paperwork, and when it doesn't work, you're free to come back to me. Okay? And that's enough on that. All right, so... Uh, getting back to the uh, writ of habeas corpus, uh, we're doing it. Let me, let me show you in the, uh, the Constitution here. It's under Article 1, right? Section 9. All right. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion. Okay, I'll click on it. We'll get a definition, a privilege of uh, the Great Writ. We're not going to go into all of it, but I'm going to tell you what you guys got to understand. What it's for is the restraint on any of your liberties or privileges, not just you being jailed or imprisoned. That's what it's commonly used for. So be prepared that when you go to file this paperwork, when you get to the counter from one of these idiots who works for the clerk, be prepared. So have, your, have yourself prepared to fight that writ of habeas corpus is for the restraint on any of your constitutional rights, which also means your right to a trial by jury, your right to have your property protected under the Fourth Amendment. Okay, so you could file a writ of habeas corpus against your employer. You can file a writ of habeas corpus against the, uh, the, the child support order because it's written by one of these referees. If you're one of these people that have it written by one of these referees, you know, these uh, commissioners, judicial officials, support magistrate, magistrates, friends of the court, ministerial judge, anybody that's not a judge, you can challenge that, okay? And and because we discovered um, this wonderful tool, the full faith and credit, okay? An essential purpose of the full faith and credit clause is to assure that the courts of one state will honor the judgments of the courts of another state, okay? That, and I've seen it when I look up uh, Supreme Court decisions where a Supreme Court, like Supreme, I mean the Supreme Court of the United States, will reference a decision from, uh, let's say, a Supreme Court of Wisconsin or the Supreme Court of Texas, the Supreme Court of Nevada. So if the Supreme Court is going to reference another state judgment, then 
why can you not reference a, a, a case law from another state? And what it is is like if you don't know this stuff, this is when they run circles around us. The way in a perfect world, it's supposed to be the judge is supposed to be a judge should say, oh, you know what? The full faith and credit, we're supposed to recognize that law. But it's, instead, if you don't know it and you don't reference it, they'll say, well, that's 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 uh, Minnesota. We're in New York. That's what happened to one of my guys. You know, uh, the, the Minnesota Supreme Court case that uh, support orders from a uh, child support agency is a violation of separation of powers. Holmberg versus Holmberg. So... Theoretically, uh, the way it should work is that if you have an order, a support order from, uh, you know, a child support agency, uh, one of these referees, because they work for that agency, okay? They're in the court. They're under the auspices of the court, meaning that the court supervises them. That's the reason why these, these hearings are held in a court building, to give you the impression they're part of the court but they really work for an executive agency. You understand? So, uh, you know, like these, these uh, commissioners, they'll, they'll work um, under the, uh, the, the court administration, okay? But see, being that they're not a judicial officer, they cannot be, te they're not technically judicial officers because they're not, that's what, they're, they're, they're not judicial officers. They're administrators. That's all they are. So administrators will come under the executive branch. So it's a complete, you know, violation of separation of powers. But they get away with it because most people don't notice. Now, we're trying, you know, we're trying different ways to, to come up, you know, to, to, to force these things. But I've, I've discovered that uh, the writ of habeas corpus uh, is, is, is probably the best way to go at this point. All right? We... we Try to rid of uh, mandamus is another one, but you know what we're always coming up against is whenever we file one of these, uh, you know, these remedies, we're always met with some resistance. Like I'll show you, um, where is it? Where the hell is it? I had a guy. Um, he filed the the writ of here it is the writ of quo rento against the judge all right and you know what they did the the uh, attorney for the uh now this is another one remember i had another guy the same thing happened with the writ of mandamus uh we met with resistance where they wanted to file a dismissal because uh they can't they can't you know this guy's supposed to show his oath of office and he doesn't want to do it now i want to show you guys something remember i told you guys about special appearance <clears throat> Look at this. The Honorable Judge Smith by special appearance. Now, special appearance must work if a judge is using it. Okay, so he's making a special appearance, but he's got he's represented by uh, the Attorney General. Now, this is this is this is hearsay. This whole thing is bullshit. This is just because they don't want to they don't want to comply. And show the oath of office, okay? Um, to challenge the jurisdiction of the court, okay? You have every right to 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 view an oath of office of a judge to to make sure that you know he's sitting where he you know he's supposed to be. They don't want to give up their oath of office because you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, I guess they don't want to be sued or whatever. Maybe they don't have it. I mean, my support magistrate in my case. She didn't have an oath. She didn't have an oath. Uh, she filed her oath on May thirteenth of two thousand and thirteen, <laughs> like a full year and change after she issued an order on me. So I have actual evidence that she didn't have an oath of office. But you know, I tried to show it. They ignored it. <clears throat> but anyway, why? Well, you know, think about this. This is a writ of quorento response to get it dismissed. All of this now. Is that because the court writ of quorento doesn't work? No, it's, it works. <laughs> it's just that this is what we're coming up against. All right? This is why this is not easy stuff. So for all of those haters out there, now, if, if, if I'm filing this type of paperwork, 
All right. If I'm if I'm offering you guys all of this stuff here, all all these weapons, and we file all of them. Now on paper they should work, but if we're, if we're coming up against this, you think that some other clown out there who's claiming his stuff works? He's he's got some type of magic bullet that I keep telling you it doesn't exist. No, they're full of shit. Okay, trust me, they're full of shit. Okay, <clears throat> they can't prove it. Okay, now they, they, it, trust me, they 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 be doing the videos of it, showing you right away all their success stories. All right, I have a few success stories. I don't have a lot because look at what we're dealing with. But when I do have small victories, I show you guys. But again, this is not easy stuff. It took me four years. Okay, so all I can do is give you the weapons and just keep fighting. All right, some people feel better fighting. Or you could just, you know, just keep paying and just have your life destroyed. But the, again, they wouldn't be doing this, okay, And if it didn't work. Think about that for a second. Rid of Corrento, and this is what we're met up against. Rid of Mandamus, I showed you guys in the past. My other guy, uh, seven-page response. Okay, but the Rid of Habeas Corpus is a the Great Rit. It's called the Great Writ for a reason. All right. So this is a, a Supreme Court decision, but I want to show you this for a reason because it has a, a, a very good uh, quotation here. I want you guys to see. Okay. In executive imprisonment. That is exactly what we're dealing with. Executive imprisonment. We're being imprisoned or restrained by these executive ju orders for child support okay look up uh, administrative procedure in the um, um, the glossary of terms okay let me see if I can find it I'll show you guys being that I'm here all right Hold on a second. All right. Whenever it loads up, hang in there. Hang in there. All right. Hang in there. All right. All right. Glossary of terms. Okay. Administrative procedure, a method by which support orders are made and enforced by an executive agency rather than by courts and judges. Okay, that's what a support order is. Okay, now what is this? Executive imprisonment. All right, this is the Supreme Court case of 2004, and executive imprisonment has been considered. Oppress oppressive and lawless since John at Runnymede pledged that no free man should be imprisoned, right, dispossessed, outlawed, or exiled, save by the judgment of his peers or by the law of the land. You understand? See how important that is? Now, dispossess, you know what that is? That means being deprived of your property. Okay, so uh, are, we being, are we being deprived of our property by support order? Yes. So how do we do that? We do it by the writ of habeas corpus. All right? <clears throat> so let me see here. This is uh, uh, mine for the... Rid of habeas corpus, proof of contempt. All right, now I changed this earlier, and I guess I didn't save it. I don't want to do order to show cause. I want to do, I want to do a writ of habeas corpus. All right. Bring it over here. Now, 
I included that in this. See? And what we're doing is we're saying we can't be, how can you be in, uh, in contempt of uh, an order issued by a referee or such? A lot of you, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have been jailed by these things from one of these commissioners or a support magistrate, whatever. Well, you know, lawfully you shouldn't be jailed, okay? It, it's not supposed to happen. And that's what this is for. Okay, so that's what uh, this is. This is just one of mine. Okay, um, I told you guys the other day I found um, a case of save. I found I found the case in New York State uh, Court of Appeals <clears throat> that voided out a void judgment quorum non judice. Now you guys, based on the full faith and credit, should be should be allowed to cite that now, okay? And I'm gonna show you this. This is the oath for judge, this is a law. Now, you know, I do research and there's a couple of good channels and the way these judges are getting around their oath under the Constitution, under the Supremacy Clause is, is you know, it, it, if they don't st cite things exactly, they look for any little reason to get away or get around it. So here, we'll show you the Supreme Constitution made in pursuance of treaties or laws under the authority of uh, the Supreme Court. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary. Uh, notwithstanding. So it doesn't say anything about the laws of the United States. So, uh, hold on a second here. So we throw this in there. That's why I started adding this because it says under the United Constitution and laws of the United States. It doesn't say anything about states. It says United States. That's the United States codes, the statutes. Okay, so I added that, and I've, in my in that uh, where is it? In that response for that for the writ of quorento, uh, they cited that because we mentioned it, right? And what the hell is it? And he brought up he brought it up this here. See, twenty eight U.S.C. four fifty governs federal courts. See, anytime we mention a federal code, these these and this happened to plenty of my subscribers. They, they, so you guys have to prepare yourself for this. You have to look this stuff up. All right, state courts they're supposed to uh, uh, you know abide by federal codes as well. All right, but they always claim they don't have to. Now. See, so 28 U.S.C. 453 governs federal courts, not state courts. Well, this is a this is the United States law, which requires that every judge of the United States, right, is supposed to administer judge uh, justice, and under the United States, and the laws of the United States. So this is a law that says they they must do they must enforce federal codes as well. <laughs> All right. So that's bullshit. It's just one of these lawyers that, you know, they just write it down. They have, they have to fill the papers full of something so the, the judge can rubber stamp it and, and approve it, okay? That's what this is all about, all right? So, but, you know, we're going to go to rid of uh, habeas corpus. That's the way we're going to go, okay? So, you know, do your homework. Look it up. All right, I have, uh, you know, I have a few of them <clears throat> that I have prepared. Let me show you. All right, I have, uh, these are all, this is just, look at all these documents there. Now, does this look like somebody that's a fraud? Again, I keep, you know, I got to defend myself sometimes because, you know, I got a response from one of my subscribers like, yeah, you know, I, I've seen, I've seen all these people saying this stuff about you, and it confuses me. Like, 
In other words, like, what are you confused about? You haven't figured out by now that I'm not, I'm not full of shit. You haven't figured out by now that I'm not a fraud. And if you, if you are, if you, if you have a doubt, please unsubscribe. Don't watch my videos anymore because I don't need you. If I gotta keep proving to you people that I'm, that I, that I mean what I say, and that uh, my efforts come from, from, from a real place, that I'm not a con man. Nobody works this hard for the, for, the, for the little bit of money that I ask for. All right, I've shown you guys paperwork from other people that put no effort into it. The paperwork doesn't even change, never even evolves. My paperwork is constantly evolving. I find if I find a new case law, I have to update all this. If I find a new case law, you know what I got to do? I got to update all of these papers here. Okay, that's what I got to do. To, to strengthen them, to make them, you know, make it harder for these people. Okay, so I don't want them to do this anymore to, uh, you know, to, to, to my people, the uh, that response for the writ of quo So you know what? We're going to do the writ of habeas corpus now. We're going to go right to the top. And it says it in that case law that I have, um, People versus Shieldhouse, it's the Court of Appeals. It says that, um, rid of habeas corpus. You don't have to, uh, re you know, exhaust all your administrative remedies like the mandamus they want you to do. Or you can, as soon as they've committed one unconstitutional act against you or deprived you of, of a constitutional guarantee, you're allowed to file a writ of habeas corpus. So we have several of them, right? I just showed you that they can't. You can't, uh, your property can't be dispossessed, right, without a judgment of your peers, right? Isn't that one? All right, so that's just one right there. That's just without a trial by a jury. People have, have challenged this, and, you know, the, the, the judges will be like, yeah, well, we, we don't have to do that because it'll, well, they're not allowed to pass laws that deprive you of that right. Why do we have a judgment of peers? Because we don't want to come up against one of these tyrannical judges, and that's exactly what we're dealing with. We're in a very bad time in this country, all right? These, these judges are, to me, in my opinion, they're probably the biggest outlaws that we have right now in our country, them and the politicians. I mean, so we got the judges, the lawyers, and the politicians. Well, 90% of the politicians are lawyers, all right? So we're coming up, you know, we're in a very bad time in our country. And all you guys know it because you're all victims of this stuff. That's the reason why you're watching my videos. You're not watching my videos because you like the sound of my voice. You don't want to, you like hearing my, my, my stories that I tell over and over again. You're trying to learn something. And I'm trying to teach you something. And I'm trying to help you. Okay? Because I told myself I try and help people. I had to take a break for a while because it was getting a little too much. And... Because I take this stuff personally, I don't like being called a fraud. Okay, because I'm not a fraud. I know I'm not a fraud. I'm surrounded by frauds. <laughs> All right, so listen, I'm going to shut this video down. All right, so listen, you, you, you saw, oh yeah, I was meant to show you guys. These I got one, two, three, four writ of habeas corpus. One is for proof of contempt. One is for quorum non judice. There's an, uh, actually, uh, I got to get rid of that. And it's one just basic writ of habeas corpus if you got somebody that's jailed. Okay? So, you know, we got a lot of weapons here. That's why I got a lot of different ways to go. And to me, I think that's the way to go right now. But you got to learn this stuff first. All right, so listen, I'm going to cut this video down, and I'll talk to you guys later.